The first alternative book that I wrote was titled Everything You Know Is Wrong. Obviously not everything you know is wrong, but trust me, the world is not what you think it is. Most people know that the weather at the equator is warm and the weather at the poles is cold. What you probably don't realize is that the climate zones between those regions are amazingly uniform. If Earth were a perfect sphere with no axial tilt and no mountains to disrupt weather patterns, you could start walking at the equator heading north or south and pass through the same 14 ecological niches in either hemisphere. You would pass through a new niche every 900 miles, one fourteenth of the distance from the equator to either pole. At the equator you would find tall equatorial forest, then 900 miles north, high deciduous tropical forest. In another 900 miles you'd find orchard and bush. 900 miles later, savanna. Every 900 miles would bring you to another climactic zone. Subtropical scrubland, hot desert, temperate scrublands, prairies, parklands, temperate deciduous woodlands, boreal coniferous forest, tundra, barren lands, and finally ice fields surrounding the pole. In the same way you could walk from the equator of a smooth ball earth and pass through the 14 major ecological niches on your way to the north or south pole, you could hike from the base of a mountain at the equator and experience the same 14 ecological niches as you climb upward. Instead of passing through new niches every 900 miles north or south, you would go through one every 1,200 feet of altitude gained until you reach a perpetual snowfield at 16,800 feet. Correspondingly, if you were hiking up a mountain well away from the equator in another of the 14 climatic niches, the vegetation at the base of the mountain would correspond to the vegetation in that niche, and you would only pass through the remaining niches between there and the perpetual snow field at a correspondingly lower altitude. For example, let's consider a mountain located in the seventh niche above or below the equator. The mountain's base is at sea level and the vegetation at the base is the seventh niche's temperate scrublands. As you hiked up the mountain, you would only pass through the remaining seven niches, one every 1,200 feet, until you reach the perpetual snow field at only 8,400 feet above sea level. Obviously, Earth is not a smooth ball with ideal weather patterns for its vegetation. It is irregular, tilted, and its environments are shaped by ocean currents, driving winds that encounter mountains, which distribute or hinder rain, which in turn fosters or hinders vegetation. Nonetheless, those 14 ecological niches are clear and present, sweeping from either side of the equator to the north and to the south in the same consistent, predictable layers that are shaped by tidal motion and weather patterns. In the same way most people are unaware of how ecological niches are arrayed on Earth, even fewer realize that the world map we take for granted is not actually true to how it is constructed. This is the standard world map everyone studies and learns in geography classes around the world. It was designed by a Flemish cartographer, Gerhardus Mercator, around 1600 commissioned by men in Europe when Europe was considered the center of the world. In order to create a two-dimensional map from a three-dimensional globe, there must be a certain amount of distortion. In Mercator's case, he abused that license to distort for the benefit of his European employers. He produced a map with a decidedly European centrist viewpoint and with strongly racist overtones. Europe was shown at its center which no one would have objected to in 1600. Yet the generations who have unknowingly used it since then still have no idea of what went into turning small Europe well north of the equator into large and imposing Europe seemingly at the center of the world. The 18.9 million square miles inhabited by Mercator's northern hemisphere compatriots are shown on his map as much larger than the 38.6 million square miles south of the equator, which are primarily inhabited by black and brown populations. Europe's 3.8 million square miles are shown as larger than South America's 6.9 million square miles. In reality, 
China is over four times the size of Greenland, but Mercator's map shows China as substantially smaller. Scandinavia, with only 0.4 million square miles, is shown here dwarfing India's 1.3 million square miles, which is three times larger. Alaska's diminutive 0.6 million square miles are drawn much larger than Mexico's 0.7 million square miles. Perhaps the most egregious distortion is found when comparing the inflated 8.6 million square miles of the old Soviet Union to the greatly diminished 11.6 million square miles of Africa. I grew up learning from this map, believing in the accuracy of this map. This is the same map still used today in programs like Google Maps, something millions of people rely on every single day. We are all completely convinced that it accurately represents what our world actually looks like. We know it represents the truth to us, even though it never has. So now, it seems, is a good time to stop arrogantly assuming what we know is always and forever correct and to instead start thinking for ourselves.